and welcome to today's Nairobi News Bulletin. My name is Modoni Mushiri. The widow of slain businessman Jacob Juma has now called for parallel investigations into, death, into the death of her husband last week on Thursday. Miriam Warimu Juma says her family wants the FBI and Scotland Yard to be involved in the investigations. Speaking at her Karen home shortly before departing for Kakamega, where there will be a public viewing of the body, Warimu said the family is ready to engage private investigators. Jacob left home on Thursday, 5th of May, at 10.40 a.m., never to return home again. I tried to reach him several times that night on his phone, which went unanswered. The following morning, I took the children to school as usual. That is when I learned of Jacob's death from other parents at around 7 a.m. on the 6th of May. The questions are, who found Jacob's death? Body, bullet riddled body at what time? At what time was Jacob's body taken to the city mortuary? Why was the family not notified by the police about Jacob's death? Jacob had all his personal ident identification documents on him. He and his residents were well known to the local current police. Why did the police not immediately secure the alleged scene? where Jacob's body and car were found. We as a family fully support the calls for the engagement of foreign help, that is the FBI or Scotland Yard, to, we, to assist in the investigations of Jacob's assassination. We are also looking to engage the services of a private investigator. The Ministry of Public Works says there will be no further extension to the impending demolition of unsound and unsafe buildings in Nairobi. Director of Administration in the Department of Public Works, George Mogoy, says the Ministry and the County Government is leading the exercise and has already notified the owners of those buildings and their tenants. Buildings also put up on riparian reserves will be brought down. The County Government estimated that some 50,000 buildings were put up without their approval and had extended the grace period to tenants to find alternative housing by a week. There are many buildings and we are working together with the County Government to identify those ones which must go as a matter of priority. We have notified the owners. We have all notified also the tenants so that they may um, vacate those premises. But as you may know also, the law normally requires owners of properties that have been condemned to themselves undertake to do the demolition, failure to which the government would do the same at their cost. You know, people say that getting approvals and authorities to do certain developments is cumbersome. But if you have the right, right status and the correct documentation, um, really it should be very straightforward. And the onus really is on county governments to give approvals. But you will find that in a lot of these cases of these buildings that have collapsed, some of those approvals are fraudulent documents. They are fake documents. Now, Sports Cabinet Secretary Dr. Hassan Wario is on the spot on the wake of confirmation that Kenya has been declared non-compliant in the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA. Nairobi News understands Dr. Wario is at pains to explain why the anti-doping law recently signed by President Uhuru Kenyatta is not enough to make Kenya compliant. On Friday, the president convened a crisis meeting in State House Nairobi following the non-compliance verdict by WADA. Those invited to the meeting were Dr. Wario and the Chief Executive Anti-Doping Agency of Kenya, Jeffeth Rugut. As I understand it, that we had agreement with Kenya and the authorities uh, on the legislation that we wish them to put through Parliament. And during the parliamentary process, there were changes. Uh, and some of those changes mean that the current state of the law is not compliant with the code. It's not right to, to, to dop, and uh, it's against the rules. And also it's against uh, you know, uh, our colleagues and uh, the athletes we compete. So um, I think um, also the anti-doping is doing their job and most of the top athletes are always on the list and uh, we get uh, frequent tests and every time we update our whereabouts. 
And finally, has Jussel Jaman Lion left the TV series Empire? That's the million dollar questions for his fans after an exploding, after an episode ended with Jamal, the second son of Lucius and Cookie, taking a bullet that was meant for his father. The actor complicated matters when he tweeted, and I quote, I've thoroughly enjoyed my time with Empire. I love you all. Truth. Time to make and record some movies. Hashtag Empire. End quote. It has, however, emerged that this could all have been a well thought out plan to show up viewership. And that's it for us for today. For these and more stories, be sure to log on to www.nairobinews.co.ke. I'm Modoni Mushiri. Have a great weekend.